tuning in, you're going to get one of these little uh, pop-ups that ask you to just to prove that you're being recorded, uh, which hopefully everybody can do. So welcome. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Babin. I'm a professor of engineering entrepreneurship. So in the School of Engineering, I teach entrepreneurship, I teach engineering entrepreneurship. I'm also the advisor for the Venture Initiation Program. So I do a, a lot of the sessions and curriculum and advising uh, for that program. But I'm here today to talk to you about um, the Y Prize and uh, encourage you to, to not only apply to the program, but I think it's a great experience. And specifically, I wanna to talk to you about creating a successful pitch. So a lot of what I'm gonna be sharing with you today are um, principles that apply in general, but I tried to cater to a lot of the content very specifically to the Y Prize pitch. Um, and uh, so I'll be sharing with you a little bit about that. But as I said, even if you are, um, you can use these principles beyond Y Prize, which I, I think is an important aspect. Um, so what I, the way I've structured this is uh, similar to what you should be thinking about from a presentation point of view. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about just what makes good presentations, how to approach them, how to structure them. Then I have two of the Y Prize winning presentations from a, a few years ago. And I thought I'd use some of those to share the examples of uh, companies that did a really nice job with it uh, and ultimately won. But more importantly, they did a nice job. And so I'll talk about some of the things that they did perfect, uh, particularly well in that context of opening, structuring content and closing. Uh, and then we'll just wrap up. I know Terry will be here um, to answer questions that you might have about the Y Prize um, competition and the, the process that we're going through. Uh, and I'm certainly happy to answer any other questions that you have. So with that being said, let me uh, dive right in and say that I didn't really give you much of an opening. Um, but what's really important is when you think about structuring your, um, your presentation, you absolutely want to think about an opening. And so here's the way I want you to think about this. Um, if I were actually doing a presentation in my workshop on preparing presentations, I'd start with a slide that looks something like this. So who can tell me what this is? You can chat, you can unmute and say what it is. It should be pretty self. Finding Nemo. It's Finding Nemo. OK, uh, and one of the interesting things about this is it's immediately recognizable. Everybody knows what it is. Um, but what I want you to think about is why did you come to it being Finding Nemo? And what memories do you have about the movie Finding Nemo, which obviously is one of Pixar's uh, movies, Pixar, an incredibly uh, effective storyteller. And that's why I showed you that initial slide of Pixar. It actually comes from a, a blog post um, from one of Pixar's former story artists, Emma Coates. But I read about it in a great book that I would recommend um, by Dan Pink called To Sell as Human. Um, and he used it as the importance of storytelling and, and the role that storytelling plays in, uh, in just our general day-to-day -day life. But what's so important for you to think about in terms of presentations is the impact that story has in engaging people uh, informing them and hopefully bringing them to some sort of persuasive conclusion. In this case, you want to win this competition. Uh, and so you want to tell a story that's going to allow you to do that. Now, this was uh, presented to me when I read this book and I said, wow, this is a great idea. And I had this exercise that I did in my classes. And normally in our venture development classes, we have people write a one paragraph description of their business. And I had the semester that I was reading this book, I had them, you know, do this as an assignment that they had done a couple of weeks before. And then I read this book and, uh, and I said, oh, this is kind of interesting. So what I did is I had them redo the assignment. Take a look at this. This is the quote Oncochip story. And Oncochip was the name of a student venture um, concept because it wasn't a real company at the time. And this was the paragraph that they submitted for the, uh, for the assignment. What I did is I said, I want you to rewrite this paragraph, but I talked about this Pixar storyline and I said, I want you to do it in that format, in the Pixar story format. And this is what they came back with. And I have to tell you, I was completely blown away. Blown away. It's now become a part of how I teach this, uh, this Engineering Entrepreneurship 2 class and any of my presentation materials talk about this. Because what they were able to do, if you kind of read through this, is when they started in that first paragraph that I showed you, it was all about technology. 
And this is important because the Y Prize is about technology. And so much of we think about in the School of Engineering and the School of Medicine is the technology that we're developing in our labs and, and the impact that that might have. But when they retold the story, they shifted their perspective to the customer, which is really important. They also went from talking about a scientific process, which might be great for scientific reading, but it's terrible for connecting with people. And they move towards telling a story. They also move from just using very technical language or jargon to being clear and concise. Now, really, if you, if you can see this slide, um, it's so important because I don't care if you understand about microfluidics, maybe that helps you, maybe it, it doesn't. But I think what's really important is we have something that can make a huge impact on people. And so that's the importance. It's shifting that perspective from something about a technology that's jargon laden to something that's about customer impact. Uh, and that's huge. So when you think about that opening, it's always good to start with something. It's just doing, going to engage with people. After that, it's about structuring your content. And you wanna structure your content in a way that's going to tell the story that you have and deliver information in a purposeful way that gets people to the conclusion that you want. So as you think about structuring your content for the Y Prize uh, presentation, you wanna think about what is it that I need to accomplish here? And great presentations accomplish three things, right? The first one we've already talked about. So first thing that great presentations do is they tell a story. Now, the story that you're gonna be telling, um, it not only sets the stage, gives us some context for what's going on, uh, as good stories do, it probably introduces a conflict. That conflict might be, these people have this problem. Uh, and it reaches a resolution, which is telling us about, well, how are you gonna solve that problem and, and what do you need to solve the problem? Uh, and so many of the business stories that we tell, are really reduced to a very simple, effective story that says these people, customer segment, right, all jargon removed, they have a problem. It's a big problem. It affects them in this way. We've got something that can solve it. And this is what Oncochip did uh, really effectively just in that one little exercise that we had. Now, there's another part of your story when it comes to business, which is really important, and that's the ask. Uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll put it over to you and I'll, I'll say, what's your ask here? Your ask is, give me that prize. I deserve it. I've got the biggest potential impact that I can take this technology and leverage it um, with my plan. Uh, and so stories and great stories uh, are emotional. They connect with people. They bring something to the table that's unique. <clears throat> and ultimately, you memorize. You, they're memorable. So hopefully after this, you know, you also find that some of the techniques are reinforcing things. Every presentation shares three things. Great presentations through share three things. Story is one of them. So you'll probably remember that. I hope so uh, when you leave here. The second thing is important in several ways. This is about organizing your information. And it's quite simply answering seven questions. Those questions can be great levels of detail if you have a long presentation, or if you just have seven to 10 seconds to tell somebody what you're up to, it might only cover a few of these. But you want to address and answer the questions of who, what, why, when, when how, and how much, um, and where. I think I skipped where. Now, a couple of things. Notice that my title of this slide says, answer the questions. That doesn't mean you want to ask questions. Asking questions can be a good way to engage, but your presentation should be answering people's questions. Uh, now, what you can see here in the business context is who might be referring to our customer, usually is but it can also be extended to stakeholders uh, or business partners or employees. What, being very clear of what your product offering is, is really critical. And the whys can be so many parts of the business. Why do customers care about this product? Um, why is it you made these decisions in the company? I, I put the five, uh, the times five in here for five whys, which gets you to root cause analysis. Where, when, how, um, are all about execution from a business context and how much uh, is about the economics associated with that. So tell a simple story, answer the questions in varying levels of detail, depending on the form that you have. And the third thing that great presentations have is they make no assumptions about audience knowledge. If I need you to understand what microfluidics are, I've lost you for Oncochip if you don't have that knowledge. You should never assume that your audience knows anything. So you need to provide the context and the explanation. So tell a simple story, 
answer those seven questions and assume that your audience knows nothing. And that's the way to think about organizing your content. Now, we have some very specific requirements uh, when it comes to the Y Prize. Is my slide not advancing here? There we go. Uh, and so, Terry, I don't know, I could only find uh, last year's rubric. Has the rubric changed? It hasn't. And funny, I was just looking for it on the website too. My um, market. Oh, here's your, I created a bit.ly for it. for uh, So it is case, okay. it, but here's your bit.ly that will bring up last year's rubric, but the format yep. is the same. So yep. what I'm sharing with you now is when you think about how do I tell my story? How do I um, answer these questions? And what, what questions do I really need to focus on? And what assumptions do I need to make? None. Um, how am I doing that in five slides? Because Y Prize wants you to do five slides. Now, even though they say five slides, um, it's actually four content areas that you'll see. Uh, and the first one is market opportunity. So this is about providing um, context for what's going on here. Well, we've got some clear, compelling application of the, of the two different technologies that are available to you. But your job is to fill in really important blanks, which is, no offense to the inventors and the faculty members that created these amazing technologies, but what people care about is what's the, the application of the technology? What is that compelling product that you're going to bring to market and why do people care about it? So that's what we talk about with product market fit, this idea of who's the customer, what's the value proposition, and, and this is important, part of the opportunity is if there are three people that can benefit from this, um, that's great but we wanna make sure that we can have a big impact, as big an impact as we can. So all of that information needs to be communicated in this topic of market opportunity. Now, um, this is a focus on transforming a technology. So I don't like to say, even though the Y Prize website says technology, no, it's about product because customers don't buy technology, they buy experiences. They buy things that make them feel good, save them money, make them money, save them time. Uh, and so I think a really important aspect is not to focus on the technology, but to focus on how you are leveraging that technology to make a difference and how the specific pan intellectual property that, that the technology you choose, um, how it advances the life of that, that product. Um, and I'll show you some examples of this when we look at the, uh, the Y Prize winners from previous years. So the first one is that market opportunity. Second one is the technology. Third one is why you? Why you, why now? Uh, and that's the importance of bringing together not just your student team and the skills and capabilities, but are there advisors or other people that you can draw expertise from uh, that will help you increase the probability of success? Um, one of the things I'll actually, you'll see this on a, on a slide a little bit later, but one of the winners of the Y Prize, um, when she came in to talk to some uh, some candidates uh, earlier, she said, look, one of the things I'll really advise you is um, the judges like to see about why your team should win this prize. Like, what is it that you're bringing to the table? And so I think this is a really important way to, to think of that. Why you? Why now? Um, and the fourth one is a tougher one, quite frankly, because the fourth one is how do you capture in a fly, five slide deck of which you probably only dedicate one slide to an execution plan, which is basically an entire commercialization plan of how to bring this technology into a product, bring that product to the marketplace um, and understand what's required and how long it takes to do that. So keep in mind, those are the requirements, but what you have to do is integrate those elements into a single integrated compelling story. So go back to that, um, that concept of the Pixar pitch and what Pixar actually did with those six elements is they actually created a storyboard template and storyboards are a great way to think about your presentation. Um, so what I would do if I were you is say, okay, I understand the four different concepts that I need to communicate in this five slide deck, but let me put that away now and let me create a storyboard that actually tells my story. Um, and so the way that I like to think about that is a storyboard is really a, a linear set of panels. So it has a linear nature, mostly because it's related to time. If you had a longer presentation, you might actually have um, layers of, of depth that almost takes on both a horizontal time orientation as well as vertical um, and vert uh, for 
for detail and depth. Um, but you definitely need to have a title slide and maybe you talk about, um, you know, this just sort of sets the tone for what the name of your organization or your project is, who the players are, maybe you have a tagline or there, but it, it just sort of sets the tone for the presentation. And then you want to reveal those next elements. But if you look at the way I've kind of folded it out here, and maybe two of these panels are incorporated into a single slide, um, but in five slides, you need to be able to say, hey, this is a massive opportunity and we can leverage this technology in this way for a product that does these things. Uh, and here's the people that are gonna make this happen. And here's what they're gonna make happen. Um, and so this idea of storyboarding allows you to focus on the story and then go back and sanity check it uh, with the topics um, that you know you're gonna be evaluated on from the rubric point of view. So I'm a huge fan of storyboarding, huge fan of storytelling. Uh, and making sure that you're delivering the information. Now, I'll also hint, and I'll share a little bit more about this later, but um, this, uh, some of these materials are coming from uh, something that we've developed across the university and are now sharing, which is we have a common uh, pen pitch deck template. Um, and I'm happy to share it. Uh, I think Terry already has a copy of it, but I'm happy to share uh, copies of it with everybody. Um, but it's one of the things, there's so many competitions and, and programs that require pitch decks and presentations. Uh, and quite frankly, if you're actually serious about starting a business and maybe securing resources or presenting to customers, pitch decks are really important. And there are some ways that are just expected of what you need to do. So that's why we created our own version of it that's adapted uh, for WhitePrize. So let me pause there for a moment and ask if anybody has any questions um, before I go on to the next uh, the next part. Anybody have any questions? Hi, yeah, sure. um, Hi, I'm not sure. Hi, um, I'm not sure if like you're gonna go into this a little bit later, but I was wondering if you could elaborate a bit on like the ending that you're looking for, and if you like kind of set um, if you'd recommend it being more of like. Uh, like a very rational, concise like call to action or more of like kind of tying back to like the introduction, like compelling intro. So it's like more anecdotal in a sense. Uh, my answer I think is yes, which is, um, you know, especially in five slides, but I think what you mentioned, a call to action or an ask, I think is really critical. Um, but make sure that that ask is is contextualized in, in something that says you have the right to ask this, which I think provides some of those, those key highlights or key points that you're talking about. Um, and, and toward your uh, your question about whether I cover it, I thought what I'd do, that, that's kind of it for the intro approach, but I thought I'd, what I'd do is actually share with you um, parts of two presentations that won this. Now, um, really important to say that the presentations I'm going to show you are not the five slide versions, they're the final versions. Um, but I think you'll see some different approaches to the opening, to structuring content, to communicating these concepts by the way, Ashna, including that final concept of, of how to make the ask, um, which I think is, is important, and in some cases, how not to make it. Um, so what I thought I'd do is share with you um, two uh, presentations. One was from Visiplate. They were actually a 2017 winner, um, and uh, they, they went on to win the President's Innovation Prize. They also have gone on to raise capital. They're still on campus. Terry uh, had Rei Jing, who's the CEO and who was the student that won the Y Prize with her team, uh, is still the CEO and she came in to present. And then Metal Light, who was the winner two years ago. Uh, I actually told Terry beforehand, I usually like to have the most recent, but I, I didn't have the presentation from last year, so I can't comment on that. Um, and so what I thought I'd do is, is just walk through those. Um, now, I think it's really important to say, uh, I'm not the one that presented, and especially the case with Ray Jang, she did such an amazing job. Uh, and in fact, I was in an angel meeting where she presented for, uh, for funding. And when she presented and then walked out of the room, everybody sort of looked around at each other and said, was that for real? I was like, yeah, that, that's for real. Um, she was that good. But I think I can talk through the intro and some of the key points that they have on the slides and, and put it in the context of what we're talking about. So remember, we structured this presentation talking about openings, content, and then a closing. So let me do that. I'm going to talk about um, Avizi's uh, or Visiplate. Uh, interesting thing, by the way, a, a hint for you. If you're starting a company, 
don't create confusion by trying to establish two brands at one time, one brand for the company, one brand for the first product the company's bringing out. So in this case, when I say Avizi, Avizi was the name of the company, Visiplate was the name of the product, uh, which again, it's a little confusing. So I'll use them to talk about the opening and show you some of the ways that they did a really nice job of talking about the product as well as the, the technology incorporated. And then uh, from 2020, Metal Light, uh, I'll share with you a little bit about their content as well. And they also had a different type of opening. Um, so let me uh, let me go ahead and jump into uh, to Avizi first up. So I, I don't know if you recognize this, but for anybody that's been at Penn for a while, uh, physically, not just remotely, um, this is our Singh Center Nanotech building. But what Ray Jing did is this was the first slide of their presentation. Um, now, this kind of violates my whole title slide thing, but it was because it was really designed to be an opening. Um, and this was one of the most effective openings of a presentation I've ever seen. What she started out by saying is glaucoma affects 80 million people in the world. Uh, and for you and I, this is the picture that we see. But for people with glaucoma, this is what they see. An open angle glaucoma, which is a leading cause of blindness, cannot be cured. 100% of people that get glaucoma will, be, will go blind big impact, like just grabs the audience and pulls you right in. Notice the impact or, or the effect of this opening, whether or not you know what glaucoma is, understand why it's an issue, um, know anybody that has glaucoma or anything else. So no assumptions about what the audience knows, equally impactful for everybody. Now, it doesn't say anything about who the company is or what has you uh, or what have you. So very quickly, they followed it up. So now, boom, we have the company name, and we're saying it's a nanoscale defense against blindness. So even though you're not sure what nanoscale means, this idea of, okay, people go blind, you've got something that might not allow them to go blind. Um, so small number of slides, clearly communicated, everybody can understand, really effective opening. Um, now, as you can imagine, uh, and if you think about the first part of what you need to communicate in your presentations, uh, we need to set that context, right? Now, I did start out by saying 80 million people. The numbers have changed a little because they've gotten bigger. Um, but I think what becomes important to understand what the technology can do in this application, a little bit more context setting was important. And so what uh, Ray Jing did in the original one was talk a little bit about what open angle glaucoma does. Um, which is it damages the optic nerve, okay? Uh, and it does so permanently, thus it leads to, to blindness. Um, and I think that's an important aspect of it. Now, you may or may not know what an optic nerve is, but you probably get the general gist here. So again, not assuming that there's any pre-existing knowledge is important. Um, An open angle glaucoma, uh, it's, it's a big deal, right? So it's a very specific type of glaucoma, it's growing. So framing the market opportunity in this way uh, is really effective. Now we have to get to sort of, okay, well, what's going on with us? Um, and, and what is this nanoscale thing that we talked about? Um, so I think this is, and, and this is very true of healthcare related devices in particular, healthcare related treatments and therapies. There tends to be fair complexity in here. Um, you'll see when we jump to metal light, it's a little bit more straightforward, but when we have a medical application for something, it, it is, requires a little bit more context setting. And, and I'll also just jump in here and remind you that uh, this was the final presentation, so not the five slide, but this was the one that really shows you um, what you need to do in that final presentation. So one of the best things that you can do is, hey, we said that glaucoma um, results in 100% blindness, but there must be things that treat it. And so what she did is have a, a slide that built up via animations, all the different things that people go through. You get diagnosed, you start dealing with different um, therapies, start with the ones that are less invasive than others. Um, then you move to procedures, then you move to surgeries, different types of surgeries, but everything leads to failure, right? Coming back again. Um, framing the numbers and the dollars involved in it become really important. Uh, and so she contributed that. Now, here's where we get the really interesting part. And I think something you need to pay attention to. You've been given two technologies and certainly those technologies in the videos that you've seen 
have some applications that the inventors have already thought of and, and maybe you know, deployed in some cases. Um, you have to make sure that you're connecting very clearly the properties of that technology and the application that you envision for it. So one of the things that uh, was involved here, which I think is really important, is the technology that they were given was a, a material that can be manufactured at 100 nanometers, right? So it's really thin, but it's also flexible and it could be handled, right? So there's all sort of that, that picture is told by four little pictures here. Um, but what they're creating is they're using that technology to create a device, right? And that device is going to be implanted in the eye designed to alleviate the intraocular pressure, which is what causes blindness. So this idea of here's the technology, but we're creating the product. And that product in this slide, you see, it's 10,000 times thinner than the average competitor. In their later slides and in their business presentations later on, they, they talk about not only is it thinner, uh, more flexible, it causes less scarring. There are a lot of other benefits that they actually were able to prove out with trials, um, which is important. But again, they weren't there yet. They were just here. Um, and so you just see a couple of nice ways of using information to grab the audience and then communicate, set some context and deliver uh, some differentiation of the products. So that's, that's sort of a, a look at a few of the slides from Visalite. Um, so we'll take a look at Metal Light. Um, and I put more slides in here, but I'm not gonna do the, the majority of them. But here's a nice title slide, okay? Um, we've got establishing a logo. We've got sort of this image that suggests light. Um, we've got a nice tagline here. We don't have the names uh, of, of the team members, which I think is something I would certainly add here, the names of who am I listening to or watching. Uh, which I think is important. Um, and so this is just up there, right? And maybe there's an introduction that you have here. And their next slide does a really nice um, job of saying, uh, hey, I'm going to introduce some interesting graphics, but I'm going to give you a one line impactful statement that might, similar to 80 million people suffer from glaucoma, might make you sort of say, whoa, 600 million people, right? The majority of the population in Africa is off the grid. Right, do not have access to infrastructure-based electricity. Wow, okay, it's pretty interesting. Now, what I want to emphasize on this slide that I really like about it is it does something else that I think every slide should. Visually, it's simple, small number of elements that you can navigate very quickly. But most importantly, the title of the slide gives you a key takeaway. And when I drop down, I immediately see information that actually um, contributes to the, the title. Uh, and that's really important. Now, one thing that they do that, that I'm not a big fan of, um, this little word up in the top problem, uh, you know, what do you need it for? Like, it's, it's almost annoying. If you're trying to use it as what we often refer to as breadcrumbs or sort of a menu that tells you where you are in a presentation, well, then have all the menu items and highlight the one that's there. Otherwise, I don't think it's really needed. Um, but the majority of the off-grid population is in Africa, while the world electrifies, right? So it's a big sort of dichotomy of what's going on. All right, so that sets the stage, but let's get to the, the point of hand, which is kerosene lamps. That's what they use in, in Africa, create health problems. So again, good title gives us the takeaway of the slide. And then if you see something that says kerosene lamps creates a real health problem, I'd want to see content that says, tell me about how big a problem this is and tell me about the nature of the problem. Um, oh, it's kerosene lamps and 99% of the rural Kenyan households use kerosene lamps and it causes more deaths than two other things, right? So content that's delivering on the title of the slide is really good. Um, we've got to connect it back to the product. And so what they do uh, is they sort of set the stage and say, okay, well, let's not use kerosene lamps but if you can't use lamps, then that means you can't do the studying that you see this child doing. So they sort of switch gears and bring us to what's the solution. Um, and they do it in a way that I think is pretty good, right? So now they're saying, hey, it's Penn's technology. How can we do that to improve health and education uh, in these off the grid communities? So it's kind of bringing us back to our, our point here. A couple of things that I'd like to see them do. Um, so remember I said, answer the questions, don't ask them. This asks the question, 
So why are you asking me? You're supposed to be up here telling me how we can use pen. So I'd much rather they take the content on this slide, combine it with the content from this slide and say, Metal Light <coughs> uses pen's technology to create light from scrap metal, right? It's not a lot more words, but it's a lot more meaningful. Instead of our solution, it says Metal Light, right? So branding. Uh, and now we're bringing pen's creation into it and we have something that's pretty cool and showing us how it's done. So, you know, you have two very different technologies that you might uh, choose from. But I think the important aspect is how do you make that connection from we're going to use this technology, which has these properties that an engineer created, but we're going to create a product that's going to be used in this context by these customers to have this impact. Um, and that's really quite frankly, I think that's one of the keys to a successful Y prize is being able to communicate that transition and that part of the story. Um, so Metal Light goes on and the rest of the presentation talks about some of the players in the supply chain, which I think is important, um, investments and what have you. And, and I think we don't need to get to that um, too much. Uh, I do think that's um, one of the things that you're asked for is a, a sort of implementation plan. Uh, and I think that's an important aspect, um, which is to have a clear sense of what you're going to do and when you're going to do it. Um, and obviously, people will ask you questions on how you're going to do it, but just communicating what you're doing and when you're doing it is a really important part of it. I thought I'd show you just another couple of things, and then uh, Ashna will come back and, and show you their ending. Um, but things that I think they did a good job of. Um, I love this technique, right? Um, they're making a claim. We've seen interest from NGOs. Um, we don't know who these people are. We don't know if they're friends of, of, of Ryan and Mintal, Minhal, who were the, the founders of this. Um, but they seem to be relevant and we've got a quote from them. So that's a really good proof point and credibility. So if you think about, hey, this team must be able to do this because they've already been able to get some credible quotes and some credible feedback from the marketplace, which I think is great. Uh, and so we come to that idea of, of the team, right? Um, now, lots of different ways you can do this um, in terms of who's the team. I would love to see you know, a tie back from the team, not just with sort of the credentials and experience, but what they've accomplished, right? You've probably heard this in, in the context of resumes, um, but it is great. It humanizes the team. We see what their roles are, how we divvy up the roles. Um, we see that we have people with different capabilities, different skill sets. Um, we just need to make sure that we're bringing those together. Uh, and then I think a, a nice closing that they did is with your support, right? This is the ask. Give us the damn Y prize. Let us do this. Um, we can, and, and Ashna, this goes back to your concept. Um, we can replace kerosene lamps. Great connection back up to our opening. We can introduce more opportunities for education at home. Also kind of brings that story full, full loop and gives us the resolution we were looking for and specific to the technology, we can transform scrap metal into light. Uh, and so I think that was just a really nice way to close the presentation. Um, and it, it seemed to work pretty well for them because uh, they won. Also the Q&A is what usually wins it for you. Uh, so those are just a couple of examples from some people that have done pretty well on this. Uh, and the last thing I, I thought I'd do before we turn it open, open it up for questions is just a, a few things to, uh, make sure that you improve your presentation, um, both the, the five slide and, and the next one. Um, and do keep in mind, there's a big difference between a slide presentation that you're gonna submit without your color commentary or without being presented in person. So it needs to stand alone, uh, which I think is, is really important, which might mean that it's a little bit more dense, a little bit more text than you might have with something that you're presenting in person. But in general, for any of your presentations, open with something that's going to, to grab the audience. You saw that with the VZ and the glaucoma um, image. Uh, you saw that with metal light, big fact. Sometimes people open with a personal story, um, you know, an experience that they have. All of that is a compelling way to open and engage with somebody. Um, make sure you're telling a story throughout your entire presentation. You know, don't just start with a, a sort of customer scenario that you then abandon. You know, let me tell you a, a story about um, Sean, who you know did this and had this issue, and we came in and saved the day, and we never hear about Sean again. Um, so make sure that your story sets the stage, introduces that conflict, and bring it back at the end, like Metal Light did, which I thought was really effective. The more real you can make it, the better off you are. 
And I think there are a number of things in a wide prize presentation that make things real. One of which is uh, if you can somehow personally connect to the, the technology and your application for it, that's great. If you can provide quotes, that makes it real. If you can provide information and data that makes um, whatever statements you're making seem more credible and more founded uh, and grounded in, in facts, that makes it real. So I think that's a, a really important element. Um, most of my slides, uh, you know, especially this one, it's like text heavy. We don't like text heavy slides. So you do wanna to try to balance your text and graphics. Again, if you're presenting in person, you'll probably have less text because your color commentary will be presenting. But you still wanna make sure that your slides have text that reinforce the key points and that your text and your graphics are actually reinforcing one another and they don't seem like they belong to different presentations, uh, which is important. Whenever possible, brand, brand, brand. Um, brand yourselves, brand your project or team name. You might change the name a hundred times over the course of the Y Prize. Just make sure that that name's out there. So you should never have something that is uh, our product, you know, or our team. Always brand yourself. It becomes important. Make sure every slide, especially the title, we understand what should we learn before we move on to the next slide uh, and make sure that the talking points and the content on the slide actually reinforce that key takeaway uh, and, and vice versa. Um, whenever you can, just simplify things. Um, there is This technology is already complex enough, so simplify it for your audience um, because they're probably not gonna be the scientists for it. Uh, and as much as you can, it kind of gets back to making it real is humanizing it. And just make sure every presentation needs to close with an ask, or maybe it's not an ask. Maybe it's a, here's what I need you to do next, okay? Uh, so we'll see how I close this presentation. Um, and, and as Ray Jane said, you know, why are you the best team to, to do this versus anybody else? So I mentioned before that, that a lot of this material comes from the Penn uh, Common Pitch Deck template, um, which we kind of gathered from friends of the family, um, best practices in the industry. Um, but it's important because too often I see too many pitch decks that literally say the problem. In fact, Metal Light said it. At least they did it in tiny words. These are not headings of slides or names of slides. Your headings or your titles um, should be something pithy and something that's taken away. And so that's emphasized in the, in the pitch deck, uh, common pitch deck. Um, you always have to tell the story. So this is an order. It's one that tends to be pretty good and hangs together. But if you find that your story is more effective by rearranging some of these elements, do that um, because it doesn't matter. And, and this is really important. I can't tell you the number of times students get hung up on um, competitions or requirements of VCs that say, we need these 10 slides. Um, Catherine Seesoff, who was the founder of Strella Biotech, not a Y Prize company, but um, a company that's still going. Um, before she graduated, she had secured over $500,000 of non-dilutive grant and competition winnings. She got to the point where she was using the same thing. It didn't matter what the format was or how many slides they said she needed to use. She was using the same deck because it was telling such a compelling story. It didn't matter if she didn't follow their guidelines. Uh, and I think that's a really important element. Um, always make sure that you're transitioning from one element to the next. That's part of telling a good story. Uh, and just be aware of the information that you're delivering and whether it's delivered in person. So please use this information. We'll turn it over to Terry for questions. But my close and my ask for you uh, is do this in a compelling way that's going to first and foremost win the Y Prize. But secondarily, and this is when I'll, I'll say come follow up with me. Um, there's nothing more that I like than taking Y Prize winners and, uh, and working with them and helping turn them into real companies or helping them turn their own version into a real company. And, and luckily I've been able to do that with both uh, VZ and with Metal Light. Um, so I encourage you to do that. Uh, Terry, um, obviously I'll, I'll stay around and answer any questions that people have. I'm gonna go ahead and stop my share here. Um, but are there any questions that we can answer for people? Yeah, hi. <laughs> Um, I guess I had a question a little bit about like the video format mm -hmm. um, and I know like in the past like there's a lot of different ways to kind of like go about making a compelling video um, and there's like an endless amount of op like options and so would you like say like some definite like 
or things that you've seen in your past or like experience that you think like as a video format haven't been as effective and like compelling and like telling a compelling story um like for instance whether it's like having like the team members faces shown versus like having something like more like animated or something like that so I'll, Terry, I'll talk in general, and then I'll let you address sort of specifically for Y Prize. The same rules, um, you know. I, I talked about um, great presentations, tell a story, uh, answer the questions, and assume nothing. That works in any medium and in any time frame. So whether you're starting out with your face, you know, looking into the camera, telling a personal story, or you're starting out with somebody else's face or a stock photo of something else matters less than how is that media being used to, to introduce your story and open your story. Um, so I think you know the same rules apply to video. I happen to be focusing here on the sort of five slides, but Terry, do you wanna talk about um, things that have been effect? And, and by the way, we just, uh, we had video submissions for, um, for VIPX and I've seen, believe it or not, I was actually surprised that I saw somebody literally just do like a Zoom presentation of their, of their deck. Um, and I was like, oh God, a Zoom presentation of your deck? It was really good. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I don't care if it was just your slides and yourself. I got your personality. I got your story. I got your whole thing. So, you know, it works. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, it all comes down to, to the content and the delivery and um, anything beyond that is, you know, kind of secondary. Um, that said, I mean, relevant to the Y Prize, just what I've seen over the years, I mean, this is my... 10th year doing this, I guess. Um, and, you know, in the beginning, when we started and it was 10 years ago, right? And technology 10 years ago was different than technology now. And we were very much like, you know, production value doesn't matter. Don't worry about that. We won't be graded on that. And that is still true. But I do feel like, you know, the, the ones that are, you know, we're a little more effort that goes into it. And that's obvious that just tend to jump out more. Right. And with the way technology is now, it's easier to you can produce something pretty cool on your iPhone that we couldn't do 10 years ago. So, um, you know, my advice just as, you know, the administrator of this and who's not involved in the content, just in the execution of the competition as an event, um, I would say just, you know, the story and and how it comes across and your content is first, but just, you know, put some effort into it. You know, as, as you know, I think you can do something great with just a Zoom presentation now, but I think that's a little bit more of an anomaly. Yeah. That everybody's as good as that, as doing that as the next person. Yeah. And, and do keep in mind, I mean, it's, it's a little too easy to make really good things these days. <laughs> um, I mean, anybody can fire up iMovie and it will come down, the judges will judge it on the content. But, you know, so it's, it's like anything else, right? Get your foot in the door. But if you don't do anything to be compelling after that, no, the door will crush your foot eventually. So yeah, Hollywood iPhone 13 cinema effects are great to grab your attention. But if it's clear that you didn't really do any research or put any thought into it, um, your Hollywood tricks won't get you very far. Yeah, so man, we did this high school program and they submitted final videos and I was a little intimidated, quite frankly, with what they <laughs> did. I was like, dang. Um, but, you know, that's that's your medium now. So yeah. I feel like my elementary school children. Can yeah, smoke. it's it's crazy. <laughs> Content yeah. still got to be there, though. Absolutely. At the end of the day, yeah, the tricks will only get you so far. Um, does anybody have any questions specifically about the Y Prize competition and what comes next. Um, so I will just say real quick, um, I'm gonna share my screen for a second. Just to um, pull up, where is it? Mm. No, I did with it. I don't know how to do this. Uh, okay, just the Y Prize website. You can find this on the web website. I just wanted to point out a few things. The next thing is the submission of the of the the first round, right? So submissions are due on Sunday, January thirtieth at midnight. Uh, we will send out all kinds of communication in the next couple of days with that, including the links to the submission form. 
Uh, so everything will be uh, pushed out via email as well as updated on the, on the website in the, in the days to come. Uh, but that is the date to keep in mind. Next is the submission deadline. So Terry, just because I always get these questions from my students, yep. I mean, 11.59 p.m. January 30th, not 12 a.m. Well, I mean, yes, yes. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I, I have to tell days. you, I get these questions all the time. From yes, students. no, I mean, That's we do what? say midnight, but I can't say, you know. Yeah. I'm not going to accept something that, you know, shows up at 9 a.m. the next day, yeah. but, it's, you know, just. No, I was like, oh, so you're not automating because it's like for the SM apply that we use, you know, literally it's, it can't be submitted after that. It shuts off. No, we, we don't. I'm not that cold hearted. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's no, we, we're not that. Everybody usually plays six to the rules. I have, I have, you know, in all the years I've been doing this, people don't really take advantage of it. So, you know, a few minutes grace is, is fine. Um, but yes, midnight on Sunday is, is the deadline. I will announce the finalists the week of the 21st and the finale will be the week of the 21st. And it does look like it will be hundred percent virtual again, um, just given the climate and Penn's rules about gathering um, right now are kind of tightening back up. So it's a little bit hard to, to gather and anything more than a classroom right now. So we are gonna go with a, a virtual event again uh, for the finale. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to email the Mac Institute, you can email me directly. Um, other than that, just keep an eye out on your email for the links to the submission page and any other information, last minute information that will push out to the entire student body participating in the Y Prize. And I want to just quickly shout out to Jeffrey that any student who's involved in this should absolutely take advantage of his help. I know he put it out there and, and he's an invaluable resource and especially as, as students, uh, take advantage of the resources while you have them. Um, because when you're, you know, in the real world, they're not as easy to come by. So it also cost you money. You're already paying. Yeah, exactly. Take advantage of, uh, and I've, I, you know, again, I've been a part of this a long time and, and I've seen him, you know, for a long time, <laughs> makes it makes successful, uh, companies that have, have come out of the Y prize. So I definitely, uh, want to plug his help and thank him for his help. And, and he's, uh, a, a great resource. No, my pleasure. And, and Venture Lab, you know, links up here, but Venture Lab is uh, including our new building, which, you know, God willing, we're going to be able to get, get into when everybody gets One back day. to campus. Uh, but tremendous uh, programming available through Venture Lab and some great physical resources as well. So, right. uh, so definitely hit up the Venture Lab site. Oh, one last thing. I also, I don't know if you've made this super, like, I, I don't I think we might've mentioned this in the kickoff, but I also want to let you know that the winner of the competition and um, potentially some of the finalists, depending on, um, I guess, like the quality of the final presentation and, and, you know, it's up to Venture Lab's discretion, but um, definitely the winner will be fast-tracked to the semifinals of the uh, Penn Warden Entrepreneurship Startup Challenge. So that's- a Venture cool Lab one. Startup Challenge. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for coming. We did change our logo or we were branding this year. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm there with that. But the Venture Lab Startup Challenge, uh, the winner of this will be fast tracked to the semifinals. So that's um, a cool perk, um, especially because the competitions are run close together. You kind of can skip the line a little bit and, yeah. and uh, get in a little later in the, in the cycle. That's all we have. Again, if there's any questions for Jeffrey or me, um, speak now, or you can always email email us later. And all right, I'll go ahead and stop I, the recording. And